Hey guys, so you might be wondering why I'm stood outside at night in the freezing cold here in Iceland. Well, it's all about this, the sky. Yeah, I know there's not much happening right now. However, a few nights ago, we saw the most incredible display of the Aurora Borealis. Oh, we, we did. It was absolutely amazing. Like someone was, was painting in the sky. I did a video for BBC Earth Lab all about the science of what goes on when you get the Northern Lights and the dangers that it may signal. Yeah, however, sadly, there are no lights tonight. But I still really wanted to talk to you about how these otherworldly lights have had a bit of a profound effect on human beings over the years. Normally, the Northern Lights are confined to a ring around the North Pole called the Auroral Oval, which intersects Iceland, Scandinavia, North America and Canada, as well as northerly part of Siberian Russia. The first written account of the lights dates back to 2,600 years BC in China, but there's a 30,000-year-old cave painting in the south of France that may depict the aurora. And before the scientific understanding that we now have was available, the different communities in these isolated regions came up with their own explanations for the mystical lights in the sky. And these have grown into a diverse collection of myths and legends. Here are five of my favourites. First up, here in Iceland, the lights have long been associated with childbirth. It was believed if the northern lights appeared while a woman was in labour, their celestial presence would relieve the pain of the delivery. But there was a catch, because if the mum-to-be looked directly at the aurora, it was thought the child would be born restless, shaky and cross-eyed. But if the aurora was a double-edged sword for the Icelanders, in nearby Sweden, they heralded only good news. Many Swedes thought that the Northern Lights were a gift from the gods, providing light and warmth from a volcano to the north. Some thought they would herald a good harvest in the coming year, while in other parts of the country, communities thought that the lights were the reflections of vast shoals of herring in the coastal waters. One of the ancient Swedish names for aurora is silblixt, literally meaning herring flash, and so the appearance in the skies would bode well for the fishermen heading out for the daily catch. Elsewhere in Europe, though, the curtains of green lights were met with fear and foreboding. In southern France and Italy, the aurora would have only been visible very rarely during times of intense solar activity. To the people living there, the lights would have been a strange and frightening sight, and one that was treated as a bad omen, heralding the outbreak of war, plague or widespread death. Some communities didn't think the lights were portents of anything, good or bad, but nevertheless try to explain what they saw with the mystical stories from within their belief systems. One of the most dramatic is the belief held by native communities in Finland that the lights were caused by a celestial firefox which ran so fast across the snow that its tail kicked up sparks into the night sky to shimmer in the aurora. The Finnish word for the northern lights, revontule, literally means firefox. But perhaps the most colourful myth, and certainly my favourite, comes from the Inuit tribes in the far north. They believed that the aurora was formed by the spirits of their ancestors, playing a ball game with a walrus skull in place of a ball. Much of the Inuit religion revolves around spirits and skulls, which makes the idea slightly more understandable. But in a bizarre twist to this legend, the Nunavik people of northern Canada saw the same ball game in the Northern Lights, only they thought it was walrus spirits instead playing with a human skull. Of course, today we understand the science behind the auroras and can even estimate when they might be particularly bright or extend further south. Sadly, that's not tonight. But that doesn't take away from the awe and wonder they can inspire in people. And even now, in our lives ruled by logic and technology, some of the old superstitions hold sway. It's still considered unlucky to point or whistle at the Northern Lights, a remnant of a Sami myth from Finnish Lapland, which said that if you whistle under the lights, spirits would swoop down and whisk you away. So, Perhaps all of these tales and the omens and superstitions that they carry with them serve to reveal the enduring power of stories and the unending wonder that the mystical aurora can instill in people around the globe and throughout history. 
I'm just looking forward to catching a glimpse for myself this evening, you never know, and seeing which of the many myths and legends resonates with me. Will it be a Firefox, a shoal of fish? I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Don't forget to check out BBC Earth Lab for the science behind Aurora and a reason why some ancient people might have had the right idea about them being important for danger. If you think that you'd like to chase the Northern Light as a job, then you're in luck. We're actually here in Iceland to launch the BBC Earth Presenter Search 2018. It's an amazing opportunity for a budding presenter with a passion for science and the natural world to join our BBC Earth family. Check out this video to find out more about how you can apply and don't forget to watch more videos that we've made about this incredible island.